Hello everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself, Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So let's begin today's class. And I hope all of you are aware of the live classes that we are taking for Arya, Sebi and Nabad respectively. And uh, this is the timetable for the courses. So Arya and Sebi students, guys, this is the time for all of you to prepare hard for your examination, okay? This is the opportunity that you can use to crack the examination and get your doubts resolved. And this is the crash course for the Nabad students who have their examination coming up on September 7th. And guys, if you want to know more about uh, the courses or about our offerings, you can use the mobile application or you can do uh, use the uh, website of ours, okay? Okay, so the very first question that we have in front of us is, which university has announced to establish an ITNT hub on emerging technology to strengthen research and development in the information technology sector? So here you have the five options. Option B, Anna University is the right answer. Okay, so basically what has happened uh, is that Anna University, which is in Tamil Nadu, has announced to establish an ITNT hub. And this hub is basically, uh, this is equivalent to a center of excellence that primarily focuses on one or two things. So the theme of this hub would be the emerging technology. So this hub would basically do the research and development in the field of information technology and it is going to be India's first emerging deep tech innovation network. Okay, so this is a very important fact about this news or this new ITNT hub. Now, how will you be able to remember this? Now, I hope all of you are aware with APJ Abdul Kalam. He was the mastermind of technology in India, the missile system, the integrated guided missile system that under which we have developed the five indigenous missiles is the brainchild of none other than the APJ Abdul Kalam. But did you ever know this fact that APJ Abdul Kalam had left everything for teaching and he was a full-time professor at this Anna University. So I hope this additional information, this fact, uh, would help you in remembering this hub because and uh, this APJ Abdul Kalam is one person who inspires me a lot personally. Therefore, I find this fact very attracting and this helps me in remembering this news. So all those who, uh, for whom the uh, for whom APJ Abdul Kalam is the inspiration, this fact will definitely help them. And if uh, you don't find that much inspiration in APJ Abdul Kalam, that is also okay. You can create your own. Uh, story or visualization effect or whatever it is short trick for remembering this news otherwise you don't have to put much attention to it you just have to remember the keywords and the two keywords are anna university and the itnt hub so these are your two keywords which you will have to remember from your exam question moving ahead union minister of information and broadcasting shri anurag thakur has recently released three books published by the Directorate of Publications Division. Which college has prepared the Interpreting Geometries, Geometries book out of the three books? So here, Chandigarh College of Architecture is the right answer. Now, now I understand that you must not have understood the entire news, what is going on. So let me first tell you the news itself. Here, two things are important. First is that there are three books that have been released by or rather published by the Directorate of Publications Division uh, Division under the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting. This is the first fact. So, the both the books, uh, the moods, moments and memories and the first citizen. These two books are uh, basically released and prepared by the Directorate of Publications Division itself. But this Interpreting Geometries book is prepared by the Chandigarh College of Architecture. So that is the second part of this news that makes it more interesting. Now all these three books relate to the Presidency of India. How? So the first book tells you the stories of the former Presidents of India from 1950 to 2017. Then the second book, The First Citizen, it tells you about the tenure of Ramnath Kovind as the president. Now all of you uh, know that he is no more the president of India. It is Draupadi Murmu, the 15th president of India and the second women president. 
the third book is interpreting geometries and it tells us about the rashtrapati bhavan so all of these are somewhere relating to the presidents of india and flooring or uh, anything related to the architecture can be understood well only by a college of architecture which college it is it is the chandigarh college of architecture so this is how you can remember this news as well moving ahead which of the following is the objective of namaste scheme so now this is another scheme that was already being run by the government of india but unfortunately or rather fortunately whatever you want to say it but it has come uh, come in the forefront at this moment okay so namaste scheme is basically for the uh, mechanization of the sewage claim okay so this national action plan for mechanized sanitation ecosystem is the full form of this namaste scheme and it has been uh, run by the department of drinking water and sanitation ministry of social justice and empowerment and ministry of housing and urban affairs now all these uh, ministries this department comes under your ministry of jal shakti so all these ministries are collaborating so that the sewage cleaning the septic tank cleaning uh, that is done by the humans as of now should be removed and the machines can be deployed there so that the deaths uh, that are caused by the toxic gas and this entire inhuman activity the deaths can be prevent prevented okay we all know that manual scavenging is very inhuman in its essence itself and right now in india manual scavenging is done and it is a very i would say inhuman uh, gesture towards the other people okay so in the times uh, of the past we needed to have people to clean the septic tanks to do this work for ourselves but as of now when we have this era of emerging technologies why can't we deploy the machines to do this uh, un unhygienic work instead of deploying the humans to them okay so the purpose is basic that is to deploy the machines uh, so that no sanitation worker come in direct contact contact with the human fecal mat matter and all sewer and septic tanks sanitation workers have access to alternative livelihood now this is a very dark but a bitter truth of india that majority of the septic tank or sewage cleaners are the people belonging to the low caste now all the people who are getting offended by this fact i did not mean to demean any caste i am just stating a fact that uh, the people who are employed in this work or who get this work basically generally belong to the lower caste so in order to remove this uh, or in order to change this status quo this scheme has been launched so that alternative livelihood opportunities can be provided to these people as well so that they can live with respect with good livelihood options and their death cannot be this uh, pathetic as it is happening right now okay moving ahead furthermore what is happening that the skill development and trainings uh, of the safai mitras is being done with the support of the ministry of social justice and empowerment through the national safai karmachari finance development corporation so guys again i would say this is not a new scheme this scheme has already been uh, run by the uh, ministry of social justice and empowerment ministry of housing and the ministry of jal shakti let's move ahead which state has launched the mission bhumi pat bhumi putra initiative and its portal for issuing caste certificates to students digitally so it is guys assam okay assam government has launched this mission bhumi putra so that it can issue the caste certificates to the students digitally and the delay that they face in getting admission or anything that delay can be removed next question is recently pm uh inaugurated the largest online herbarium database the indian virtual herbarium web portal to provide complete information on herbarium specimens about the floral diversity uh, of india and other countries stored in the cabinet of the herbarium building through online access in how many categories is the herbarium divided at present okay so here four categories uh are there in which this herbarium is divided now what is the news exactly first of all understand this thing that the nabard students this news is very crucial for all of you you can expect a question out of it in your examination okay how that i will tell you 
first thing is that indian virtual herbarium web portal has been launched now this web portal will provide the information about the herb herbarium or the herb specimens that are stored at the herbarium of india okay so the all the specimens of the herbs that are stored there now that uh, information will be provided on this virtual herbarium that is the news as of now now the link of this portal is this ivh bsi government of uh, government.in because bsi that is botanical survey of india has developed this portal now your task is to tell me the where is the brick and mortar herbarium located in india okay because this is the online version of it so there must be an offline or brick and mortar existence of this herbarium so where is it tell me in the comment section okay this is a very little task that i have set for you all so please tell me so under this initiative basically the herbarium has been divided into four categories now in your ard current affairs you can expect a question even out of this also okay they can ask you the name of the categories as well because this is very uh, integral to your agriculture part okay so cryptogam type specimens cryptogams general specimen uh, uh, phanerogram type specimens and phanerogram general specimens so these are the four categories and broadly two categories okay cryptogam and phanerogram so i hope that this will help you in remembering the news okay moving ahead with which company has national tiger conservation authority signed an mou for transcontinental relocation of cheetah in its historical range in india at an event held in new delhi so guys it is indian oil corporation now uh, this oil com company basically this is india's largest oil psu as of now why is this helping this national tiger conservation authority in relocation of cheetah guys these big companies do such activities for their csr purposes okay the corporate social responsibilities which these companies have to comply with okay now moving ahead i hope all of you have uh, heard about the mou that was signed between india and namibia for the relocation of cheetahs in india because cheetahs have become extinct in india so we have planned to uh, introduce five cheetahs into the kuno national park which is in madhya pradesh okay so that is the all news that this mou is the continuation of that mou with namibia okay on wildlife conservation and sustainable biodiversity utilization so this is the name of the mou between india and namibia now guys i hope all of you are aware of the saint petersburg declaration of 2010 in the saint petersburg declaration it was decided by all the tiger ranging uh, countries that they would uh, increase or double the population of tigers by 2022 and india has succeeded in that now my question from all of you is can you tell me how many countries are the tiger ranging countries now do listen to me carefully tiger range countries i have asked from you not the cheetah countries okay so tell me in the comment section below okay moving ahead which bank has launched the industry first dedicated men focused company sorry committee empower him so this is union bank of india for so long we have been hearing about the committees or the initiatives taken for the women specifically now this bank has done a unique thing okay this union bank has done a very unique thing and that is the launching of this committee the establishment of this committee now what is the purpose why have they done that so the basic purpose is first of all know this fact that this empower him is a part of the prerna campaign now this prerna is the uh, is the human resource transformation project of the union bank of india okay so it is an H hr pro uh, project so under this project this empower him committee has been set up and the purpose of it is to resolve the problems faced by the male employees of the bank and this prerna initiative basically aims to uh, increase the productivity of the employees through through digitization of the processes and the and taking the employee centering interventions and resolving their grievances so the, this is the basic purpose of it 
moving ahead uh, what is the mandatory turnover requirement for companies to fill e invoices with effect from october 1st 2022 so it is rupees 10 crores now guys date is also important do remember that from october 1st this limit is going to become effective 10 crores and it has been reduced from earlier limit of 20 crores now guys i hope all of you are aware of the fact that gst was a constitutional amendment so which article of the constitution tells you about the gst this is your another question tell me next question is recently unesco has added a 106 year old astronomical observatory at langa uh, singh college where is the observatory located so it is located at muzaffarabad in bihar so a very simple news it is that unesco has added this astronomical university observatory into its list of important endangered heritage observatories of the world next is who is the author of do different the untold dhoni book so it is uh, option d joy bhattacharya and amit sinha both of them have written this book do different the untold dhoni so here guys this video ends i hope that you have enjoyed the video and if you really have enjoyed it then do share it among your friends do like this video. Thank you so much. Have a good day.